Hi everybody. I'm in the park once again. Helen Howworth Park. I enjoy painting here because there's just so many beautiful trees and beautiful views. It's really strange even the smallest thing like some rain can make a painting when there wasn't one. I enjoy reflections and I find them anywhere fascinating. So here we are in the park looking for something to paint and I found this little puddle right next to these trees reflecting the light and the shapes of the trees in it and thought that's it. So we're stopping here and we're going to okay, paint here's this. Here's my scene. It's beautiful. I'm on this path. I'm at the park. The sky is perfect. Colors are perfect for the moment. I don't have all the paints I need, but I will manage somehow. I'm eaten alive by mosquitoes. I did bring some mosquito spray. I'm just basically locking in my scene at the moment with some juicy paint. And we'll get back to it in a bit. Let you see how I'm doing this. Mostly just starting with some green because this is a very green scene. So we're going to be using a lot of green and red today. basically getting in the darks and the lights at the moment, mostly the darks, and we'll go from there, and I'll show you where I'm at in a minute. Again, there's the scene. I'm just putting in some basic colors right now uh, in a monochromatic, so I can see where my main tree is, where my tr side tree is. There's another tree-ish thing coming from here. The water is going this way and this way. It comes over here, but it's lighter in here. These are the darkest darks that are in the painting right now. And again, I'm gonna make them a little darker than this with some blues to darken the greens and some reds. And then we'll go from there.
getting kind of late. I'm probably going to do a little bit more on this, but not too much. A few little greens that I like here and there. Probably finish it at home. This little brush is pointed. Just to give you the idea of what I'm going to put in here, some of those little grasses up front you can see a little bit better. Some of them are kind of laying across the water here just a little. There's branches in here. There's lots of little things I'm going to put to liven it up. Even back in here. Things are different shades of green. But you can't show too much detail far away, but I do want to show that on the edges here, I can see some lighter greens. And up front here, Turn around when you hear noises. Getting a little late out here. So I will probably pack it up. Anyway, we're getting the idea. It's kind of getting what I want it to be. Not completely, but we're getting there. I have a lot of little details I want to put in it, but I've basically got the concept of what I'm looking for. This light right here, reflecting off these beautiful trees here. Some of this blue down on the bottom is actually a cooler blue than the sky blue. Way up overhead there are some darker clouds or some darker blues. And I think that's what's reflecting down here.
I like to give the illusion of detail without really putting detail. And I guess that's the definition of impressionistic. A lot of these trees are filled with moss or with ivy and they look like they're a little blurry but they're actually coated with leaves. That's why they look so dark because the wood of the tree or the bark on the tree is actually lighter. So I need lots of little twigs and vines and branches that are off in the background, but I don't want them too dark because they have to show they're in the distance. So cooler and lighter in the distance and darker and warmer with more hue as they come forward. Then I put dark in my darks, so I'm darkening some of my darks and I'm lightening some of my lights. And again, that helps to establish dimension and give the illusion of detail. This is not a bright, sunny day. So we're just painting off of a walkway where it's kind of gloomy, but I love this. Sometimes the green grasses are actually more vibrant when the sun is not out. Yes, this is Florida, so there is green, even in the winter time, or I guess I should say in the fall. We don't lose our leaves on our trees here. If we have any trees that come close to dropping their leaves, it's really in the middle of the winter. So there's lots of green on top of green. I did put some warmer things in the back where you normally wouldn't because there's palm trees and things back there and some dead vines. And I did want to show some of that.
So where you might think you are looking at black, you are looking at a mixture of dioxazine purple and a very dark green and in some cases a little bit of ultramarine blue mixed in. Once in a while I add a little bit of red in there just depending on where the dark is. But there is no black in this painting even though I'm not opposed to black. It's more than dark enough without it. Colors like purple and orange are always appreciated in my paintings. Nature has all colors in it. And sometimes that purple can take the place of some of the sand that seeps up in between the grass here in Florida. And it may be a little bit more purple than the real thing, but I like to add a little expressionism to my work. I am not a photorealistic painter, so I do not do every minute detail, nor do I make my colors exactly the same. I give my painting what I think it needs. And you can see that's definitely a replica of what I'm looking at, but it's my own version. I had to search high and low for this fan brush. I knew I had it somewhere. It's very rare for me to use a fan brush. But I did want something that would make some sporadic marks. And this seemed to work out pretty well for me.
see some darker darks going in and some more vibrance. And now I'm using my rigger brush to put in some of those little tiny vines and tiny branches that are everywhere that fill the painting and make it look so realistic. I put some in in dark, I put some in in light. Then I did a little dabbing here and there because there's stuff scattered all through this water and all over the ground. Just trying to give it the feel of what I'm looking at. There's a road that goes back there that cars drive on. A very narrow one car road. And that's that light you see back behind those trees. You can walk there. And I often do take a walk around there. It's maybe three quarters of a mile around the whole perimeter. I don't purposely set up my scene in an S formation or a C formation or an X formation. That stuff drives me crazy. I just look at my scene and I decide what is pleasing to my eye. I know I want my viewer to go through the painting. And so I automatically take photos of and use my little viewfinder and come upon a scene that has a pretty natural pleasing formation. I'm looking for focal points, I'm looking for light, but it's all done very subliminally, something I do subconsciously. You can't intellectualize art to the point that you take the creativity out of it. Most likely, if you find something stunning and beautiful, it's going to work out and there's a reason why you like it. And that reason is probably because it's got a shape that would be successful in a painting. Something that people will be drawn into. And usually what you're trying to do is capture the light. Everything else is secondary.
The hardest part of the whole painting is signing it. I have never gotten a brush that I feel is right for my signature. I will figure that out one of these days. So these are the final little details. Here and there, little pieces of grass, so that you know you're not looking at a completely flat piece of ground. Thanks so much for joining me, guys. I love painting these paintings and sharing them with you. Come along again for the next one. See you then.